Do you really have a clear understanding of what your purpose, your goal, or your belief is with respect to your innovation plan? Is your innovation plan really something that you're going to be doing? Do you believe in it? If you don't believe in your plan, how can you expect others to follow you or how do, can you expect others to uh, adopt your ideas? I want to help you get clear on your why, how, and what statements and help you understand how these key essential statements will help develop a sense of urgency for you and for those that you're planning to lead through your organizational change strategy. One of the most important things that you really need to do is get clear on what your innovation plan is. Yes, you've all been through uh, 5305, the innovation planning course, and you've all established a bit of a strategy, but this is the course where it has to really become real. So if you've been hedging your bets and assuming this is what you're planning to do, but if you really don't have an authentic innovation plan that you can actually implement, you're going to have difficulty with the why, how, and the what, as well as a sense of urgency and most of the assignments in this particular course. So you really want to get clear on what it is that you're planning to do and really get clear on why it's going to change lives and, and why and how it's going to help you improve the learning environment for your learners. So let's let's take a close look at the why statement. Um, in the assignment, we're simply asking you to establish a single statement for your why, your how, and your what. The why is a purpose, the cause or belief, the how is a process, what actions do you take to get there, and the what is as a result of these actions, this is the type of a learner that you will have. The result is who are your learners going to become? What are they going to do? You know, this, this is the difference. You are making a difference in other students' lives or your students' lives. So this is really important. We have several examples. We have the example from the Digital Learning and Leading Program. We have an example from Apple. And then I have an example from um, what uh, I have the opportunity to develop with another institution. But I want to take you into some of the examples of other students' work that were really quite good. And if you, if you go to our, uh, uh, or if you go to my uh, website and you take a look at the um, uh, mapping page, the program map page, you'll see this particular uh, table after the, the videos and you'll be able to you know, pull up the uh, examples. And I simply pulled up the first four, three or four examples um, and not in any particular order. And I want to show you um, some of the key things that really set these examples apart and really set the why, the what, and the how in a, in a way that really can make a difference. So if we take a look at somebody like uh, Michelle Little's work, very conventional, a um, little bit of graphics involved, but very simple, concise statements, a bit of introduction, uh, the notion that she's looking at these ideas again, why? Never underestimate the value of building relationships that can maximize potential uh, students and open doors for future opportunities. How? Well, we make meaningful partnerships by investing time to solve real challenges with digital applications, social connections, emphasizing how this is going to happen. And then what happens? Well, you have students who are career ready. They reach beyond their personal expectations and they've taken ownership in the foundation of the ePortfolios. So this, in, this student is doing an ePortfolio initiative um, and this really frames the difference that, that these statements can make. And she incorporated the notion of the speaking to the heart, right? The head won't go where the heart hasn't been. She talked about the sense of urgency and she had her references. This is a top quality assignment, short, concise statements, a bit of an explanation about how the urgency works. Another example, um, again, really straightforward, text-based, a little bit of a visual. I'll let you look at it. I'm not going to read this one out loud, but again, very simple one-sentence statements. 
Empower learners with skills, knowledge, and experiences to become successful 21st century citizens. Inspire them to become lifelong learners. And then you can read the rest. And then a personal reflection about how this came into being and why is this important. Um, and talking about you know the 21st century needs of the learner. It's all about making a difference in that learning environment. References are in place. Properly formatted, capitalization is, is in the proper format. Um, we've got a couple more examples that are a little bit different, not all that conventional. Uh, Kaylee's example, she's using uh, Sway, and you've got to scroll along, and it's quite interesting. It's quite visually appealing. Um, it takes some manipulation for you to be able, be able to see it. But again, short, concise, single sentence statements. In order to reach a potential or maximum potential, we believe that students must be at the center of the learning process and must learn to leverage technology in meaningful ways. Hmm. Okay. How? Well, how do you do that? Well, through blended learning and a school innovation station, students are provided choice, ownership, and voice through authentic learning activities that promote collaboration and exploration of the world around them. Oh, okay. So what happens when you do that? What's the result? Well, they create or we create lifelong learners with the drive and skills to be successful not only in their future careers but in life remember you're preparing them for life and then the part b is really addressing that sense of urgency speaking to the heart and kaylee addresses these uh, issues as well a couple of paragraphs references are in place another wonderful example um, yeah, we've got uh, uh, Jackie's example here, or sorry, Jamie, uh, Jamie Valesco's example. Uh, this one is again a little bit different. We've got a bit of an intro, a link to a Prezi, and then you've got the explanation. And and the Prezi is is quite, I think, is quite engaging. So uh, I'm providing examples that really show the the fact that you can use whatever tool you want um, to share this uh, these ideas. But again. The common denominator here is short, concise statements. Why? I believe students have the right to explore their learning curiosity in order to effectively build their passion for education. Building passion for education. Important. How? Well, we promote that passion for inquiry by providing a STEM lab with blended learning and flexible that is uh, with blended learning that is flexible and student-centered. What happens as a result? Well, you, we establish opportunities for students to create, design, and evaluate authentic projects which will promote skills such as problem solving and collaboration. So that's who the students become. That's what they're able to do. Very, very important. And a summary and a call to action. Hey, always want to include a call to action. And then going back, um, uh, Jamie also has sort of a, a connection to the whole notion of uh, creating that sense of urgency and how this is connected to her innovation plan and the references are in place. So these are four examples of what you want to do. Three succinct statements, a paragraph or two connecting these ideas to your innovation plan and how to create that sense of urgency. Proper referencing and it's all going to be good to go. Um, I want to encourage you to explore, to experiment, but most importantly, take ownership of your innovation plan. The sooner you get clear on the purpose and the goal and, and the sooner you start acting on the belief that you want to transform your learners' lives and change their world, help to change their world, the sooner these pieces fall together. Looking forward to seeing what you folks are going to come up with.